So one of the ways to find out what sort of losses you have from the combine. So it's not that we want you to have losses, but something that you can do to work out where the losses are actually coming from. So you need to decide, first of all, when you come down the steps, is it coming from the cutter bar or is it coming from the rear of the combine? If it's coming from the cutter bar, you need to decide then, is it in front of the cutter bar or behind? And then as you go behind, then work up, right, is it coming from my sieves or is it coming from my rotor? Or if you have a straw walker machine, from the straw walker itself. So one of the ways to help that is actually by using your straw chopper and your chaff spreader to work out one of what's, which is happening. So to work out what's happening from the bottom. So this is working out the loss, losses from my sieves. This is not the total amount of losses, this is just losses from my sieves. Is take the chaff spreader and actually put the chaff spreader out of work and then put the chopper into gear and spread the chopper as wide, so the chopped material as wide as you can. Then everything behind the combine will be from my sieves. So that way you can then decide how you can set up the sieves. You see, it might be fan speed, it might be just the top sieve that you need to set up. The other one then, now what's happening at the top of the combine? Now this one's a little bit easier. Put the chaff spreader back into gear like we have it here, and then put the chopper itself out of gear and get everything so you get your swath to actually fall in behind the combine. And that way you can work out your losses from the top of the combine. By doing that, then you can work out, do I need to do anything more in the top of the machine or less in the top of the machine to get the right sort of balance. So between that, then you can also set up your monitors itself and decide whether the monitors are actually showing you the correct value. So what physically is on the ground, does that relate to what's happening on the screen itself? So by doing that, also make sure that when you do check this, that the, you have got something showing on that screen and you can see whether the screen itself is showing exactly what's happening on the floor. Okay, so but getting the fine balance and getting your monitors set up so you can see on the screen what's happening at the back, that's about the easiest way to check and set it up. So one of the things, once you've worked out what the losses are from the actual machine, from the top or the bottom, is then setting up the monitors themselves. So what you're looking for is the monitor must show something, in other words, it must show what's actually happening out the back of the machine. So that little white line across the top, like we show you in Seabus, that little white line, that is the maximum that you will accept. So when we're checking the losses out the back, we must make sure that these lines, or sorry, the blue line is coming up to that white line. So you know that what's on the floor is the same as what the Seabus screen is showing. If it, you haven't got anything showing on that line, you need, need to then adjust the, the sensitivity of the monitor to bring that blue box up to that white line. So by doing that, finding out what's on the floor and actually see what's happening in Seabus, you can actually then make sure that Seabus is showing you exactly what's happening at the back of the machine.